Hey guys, Phoenix here, and happy Valentine's Day, whatever. So, Stupid Cupid by Lucio Lantern, I guess. It's a free game on Itch.io, I figure let's play a Valentine's Day type game, whatever. Link in the, in the description for the game. Uh, hello there, darling, it is I. Earthia, the gorgeous, benevolent, and ever humble goddess of romantic love. No need to grovel, but I certainly won't mind it. I have purchased your little soul from Meltios, the god of death. I have a very special task for you. Please hold your excitement. You see, all seen benefactor of romance that I am, I simply don't have the time to f fulfill all the prayers that are sent my way. As where you come in, I need an agent to spread love on my behalf. You'll go down to the human plane and shoot love arrows at their intended targets. And if I don't want to? Well, I am the owner of your soul, so I could just turn you into a drilling mind zombie who brings me snacks and holds up my throne. I could do that, if you'd prefer. So, romance, right? Let's love it. Let's do it. Oh, boy, there's a lot of things here. Uh, wonderful, I just love enthusiasm. Now, before we can turn into my personal agent of love, you have to prove yourself. I'll give you three arrows with the name of the lovely person who called upon my services. You'll fly down to where they are and choose from those around them, who you believe to be the one best suited as their one true love. Fail all three, I'll go ahead and turn you into a zombie. Sound good? This is in the browser window, so that's why there's a scroll bar. And why I have to scroll. So, yeah. And there it is. Great, let's get right to it. Uh, within mere seconds, you're transported back to the mortal realm. You're in the middle of bustling in filled with adventures of all types, so relaxing at may wary adventures. You look down at the bow and hit arrow in your hand, emblazoned in gold on the arrow is just a name, Jude. Hey, Jude! Jude turns out to be the timid innkeeper's son. Oh. Leaning against on the counter with a slightly forlorn look, he gazes out the nearby window dramatically, pulling strands of massive brown hair from his eyes and occasionally readjusting his thick spec spectacles. He currently looks like he needs to get laid, so he glances around for someone to shoot his arrow at. Okay, I really hope this isn't going to have nudity in it, because then I can't put this on YouTube. Although I don't think um, the 11.45 game got demonetized ever, despite it having nipples in it. Anyways, it seems your newfound love power has given you the ability to be uncomfortably aware of your intended client's deepest interest in kinks. Uncomfortable, but useful, you suppose. You quickly spot two candidates that are very much due to cup of tea. Curled up in an armchair, lit by the rays of Saints and a stoic looking dark elf with long white hair that spills eloquently over his shoulders. Over his shoulders. His golden eyes studiously look over the grimoire in his hand. The table next to him is covered in crumbled scraps of paper. The dark and brood type, it seems. Your the option is an orc draped out of a couch nearby. He's shirtless, as orcs tend to be, with long black dreadlocks decorated in beads of all shapes and sizes. He's covered in scars and disheveled state of his clothes. Say that he must have just come out from some sort of battle, peeking out from the bag laid out. And the floor next to him is a bouquet of wildflowers. Clearly pegging him as a scary looky, yet secretly sense of time. Well, time to make a choice. Is this Yaoi? Did I accidentally pick a Yaoi one? God fucking damn it. Clearly, definitely the orc. Ugh. By the way, this in no way indicates my personal preference, because I like girls. So I'm going to go for hilarity and sakes. As the arrow hits the back of the orc's head, you cross your fingers and pray for a good fortune, good outcome. Once the arrow hits, the orc sits up with the jaw, looking for any idea of what just exactly hit him. As his eyes land on Jude, his jaw drops. However, he quickly closes his mouth and grits his teeth in determination. Determination. Digging into his back, he pulls out a bouquet of flowers and makes his way right to Jude, who finds himself jolts to his tension at the sight of the giant man. You're too far to hear the dialogue, but from your perch, you can see there's some grade A flirting going on. The orc hands Jude the bouquet with an elegant flourish. And the poor boy takes it shakily, his already red face only growing brighter on, but the orc takes his hand in his, pla in his and places a gentle kiss on. Hot damn, you actually did it. Hell yeah, time for arrow two. Ugh. There's no art, this is, I was hoping for a mini game or something. <laughs> oh. As you grab hold of the next arrow, you're, you're poofed to the next destination. The second your eyes adjust to the low lived area, if you find yourself being nearly cleaved in half by a ridiculously large broadsword, Throwing as fast as you can with your puny little chub wings, you survey the surroundings. You seem to be in the middle of a very intense final battle between some of the Dark Lord assisted by his servant and spiky-haired protagonists flanked by 
three other equally eccentric looking party members. There's lots of dialogue and plot jargon that makes your head spin. You don't really care about the meteor mother and dream children or what they're talking about. You're just here to shoot things. So Final Fantasy seven reference, got it. You check your arrows for your target once when you see the name Lord Tenebris. Your eyes drift into the Clark cloaked figure standing in front of the heroes. He's got black hair that nearly brushes floor even while floating. And sad looking red eyes. That's his face. Blah blah blah. Sephiroth, got it. Your love sense to tell you that Lord Tenebris is Sorry, your love sense will tell you that Sephiroth's evil deeds are a result of him losing love of his life nearly a century ago. And since then, his life has been nothing but a deep pit of despair. What a fun guy, your two options are pretty obvious. The protagonist with his bright orange eyes and matching hair faces the dark lord with an optimistic grin. He exudes sunshine and it kind of hurts to look at him for too long. Lest all that youthful vitality purify your cynical soul. If just one look at him can do that to you, falling in love with him will probably induce some sort of redemption arc. The other option is his servant, an equally terrifying and attractive vampire. Elegant when you some wicked looking knives and floating slightly in front of her lord. If you know your JRPG tropes, and you like to think you do, this should probably have been with him for years and years, working alongside him as his closest confidant, right hand, and dearest friend. Seems like the sensible option. Sunshine Boy over there seems pretty plausible. You hear him just as he's about to go into a speech about friendship, probably, and quiet him down for one. He stops. And to everyone's surprise, Lady Sound Sword steps forward while staring into the eyes of Lord Tenebris. It's been trans, the Lord steps forward as well, and as two of them meet in the middle of the battle zone, still staring deeply into each other's eyes. <laughs> the Lord looks shocked at Gaspar. Oh, your eyes, they're just like hers. After all this time, could you be? The two of them embrace while the heroes and Sir are watching all. Oh, you're pretty sure you just saved the entire kingdom. Hell yeah! Oh, God. Arrow 3, please get me out of this. Ugh, why did I just set up Cloud and Sephiroth's slash fiction? You drop right into your last challenge into a slightly less dangerous situation, right? Next to a rather sweet looking blonde woman, finally, in a flower crown and white dress. She radiates angelic energy and she's vaguely terrifying in a way you can't pinpoint. You glance down the arrow and see that her name is Evelyn. You glance around and find yourself at the middle of what looks to be a warrior's training camp inhabited entirely by a woman. Score. It looked like at some point they were actually trained, but now things have turned into a fighting tournament of sport. Your love sense immediately kicks in, showing that Evelyn is very interested in the two women currently battling. The two wood swords clash in the middle of the battle before the girls jump back, allowing you to see them properly. The first girl is regal looking, with long black hair and a princess cut and clothes that are unmarked. The other girl not even laying scratch on her, sneering down at her opponent, she flips her hair over her shoulders and scoffs, and the girl behind her in a frenzy of cheers and jeers. The other girl, the underdog of the fight. <laughs> is the scrappier of the two, covered in bruises, bright yellow eyes, flashing in anger. Her hair is short and choppy. They can't tell if she meant for it to be as short as it is, and kind of how messy it is. Her hands are shaking as she clutches her practice sword, ready to rush back in for an attack at any moment. What is it about being in the middle of a fight that makes people want to fall in love? Jeez. I mean... I wish I had pictures. I feel like the scrappier... I mean, that's the one I would like, personally, without looking at a picture, at least. I'll go with that one. You send the arrow towards Underdog, just as she lunges towards the regal girl, and the arrow flies right into the chest of the shy girl behind her. Oops. The girl cast her eyes meets Evelyn. Blushing deeply, Evelyn smiles gently and stands, walking across the fight circle and standing in front of her. She leans in and says something you can't hear, causing the shy girl to blush even brighter. You turn to see that Underdog slid right into the regal girl, sending them flying to the ground, their lips pressed together. The crowd of girls led a chorus of coos, whistles, and laughs. This was not a proper pen, but hey, you're not complaining. Um, I mean, as long as Evelyn's happy. How'd I do? I knew you were the perfect world job turn. Welcome to Life Farm Site. Oh, I'll be. Absolutely wonderful. Let's get started. End three, Agent Lo Okay, there's multiple endings. But that's all I'm going to play, because this game's free. It, you guys can play this game if you want to get the other endings. See the other dialogue choices. It's up to you. So if you like the game, do the thing that does the thing that lets me know about the thing, and support the creator of the game by playing it yourself. Until next time, bye bye